so my real life experience, not, a, not enough research, my real life experience of heavy metals this past year. Oh, this is what I was going to say about um, Dr. Malone. He brings up in this interview that like we're having a resurgence of these viruses that have been typically dormant in the collective, right? Like Epstein-Barr, which is connected to heavy metals and, you know, that's all described in, in medical mediums book and his in liver rescue and um, what's the other one eat to I think it's eat, uh, cleanse to heal super powerful books all of them um, and he's like and we don't know why and the reality is is that a lot of the stuff went dormant and hiding out in our liver right which is why the liver is so important not to do an aggressive detox with the liver, but to support its natural, the body's natural ways of detoxing. So for me, I had stuff coming out my skin, you know, all these dermatoxins and neurotoxins and everything were coming out my skin in the form of eczema because my liver was totally taxed. It was totally maxed out, right? So what I learned was that my liver wasn't, oh, it was overloaded, right? It was sluggish and I had stuff stored there, like on every dimension probably, you know, liver holds our anger, it holds our rage, resentment. I had to go in there and I had done a lot of that work because that's the work that I've been, you know, that I work in, right? So especially with the painting, like I cleared and released a lot of that in an alchemical process, but the body's the last to heal and the last to release because it's in the physical dimension, which is the most dense. So I had to do this detox to release these final layers, right? Within the liver, the liver from a metaphysical perspective, right? So you can do all that kind of, you know, soul retrieval, um, inner child healing, you can do all of that alchemy until the cows come home but if you're still putting heavy metals into your body right or if your your liver is still holding on to heavy metals and there's an ecosystem between the heavy metals and the bacteria and the viruses according to medical medium and information and parasites and all of that right there's a natural ecosystem that the body you know that's kind of homeostasis for the body and then that goes out of balance when there's too much of them, right? And so the heavy metals, you know, when you start to detox the heavy metals, you have to also work with, with detoxing the viruses and the bacteria and everything else because if you detox one, it's gonna affect the whole system, right? So it's quite the cleanse, quite the healing protocol, and it's actually in many ways really simple. You just have to implement it and you really have to do it. To see the results and of course you'll go through a healing cross crisis which i did <laughs> where everything was just coming out my skin i mean i had to tweak a few things like take more glutathione and things like that to support the liver and things that i wasn't able to get in bali that i can get here um you know so um, i'm well versed in this but i mean it really came out a lot of it was purging out of my skin and put myself into a healing crisis you know and um which was quite painful and it made me realize like if you truly want to heal it's going to be painful <laughs> you know um i mean there are the dark nights of the soul and the he physical healing crisis and the purges that come up that is part of the release process and that's why our culture is so medication driven it's so let's just pump let me let me just give you some you know a, a shot let me just shoot you up let me just pump you with medication. Let me just give you a pill to pop, you know, instead of doing the real deeper work and using and, and growing in discipline and taking self-responsibility for your health and your healing and getting the right tools and the right information and the right facilitators, the right support. You know, I'm not denying that the system isn't a little effed up, you know? Um, so real life experience, heavy metals poisoning and it was poisoning I mean it felt so toxic and I haven't 
ever really had to deal with any kind of sickness. In fact, we weren't, I mean, Sophie and I didn't go to a doctor once when we were in Bali, not once, except for me with this rash, because, you know, I think we had probably COVID early on and um, didn't know it uh, right before the, the, uh, the pandemic and sort of became a thing. And, um, you know, it was just like any other flu, but we weren't sick after that. So I figured it's probably what it was. So in research, so number, my third reason is researching the pandemic. Something just doesn't line up for me, you know? And I think also coming back to the U.S. after being in Bali for, for two, almost two years, um, and living in an international community where we heard stories and where also even in Bali, like we just didn't see it. We didn't see a lot of COVID. We didn't, we, we would hear stories and even of the locals and the foreigners talking about like, I, we just don't see it or so-and-so went to the hospitals and they're empty or um, there. So, you know, my uncle was paid to say that my aunt died of COVID so they could get a check or something like that, like a lot of corruption. So I, you know, I just, 